Good morning to the church family. Again, I apologize for whatever technical issues we were having. Uh, we're just about 10 minutes after, and so I um, apologize for something that's really beyond our control. But again, we greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and we thank you for joining us. I was just on the um, phone with Andreas, so he's actually on his way here. So if you see me step away from the pulpit for a second, it is to allow him to come in. Uh, but church, and let me just begin by saying thank you all for your prayers and thank you all for the care in which you're giving to yourselves and to your families. This is a very stressful time, and it's a time that is trying all of our faith, um, making us go deeper, making us search the broader spectrum of life and to see what's really important to us and what matters to us. And so this morning, I, I say to you, be faithful, continue to hold on. God will take care of us. Let us begin as we pray together. Lord, again, we thank you for the gift that thou hast given unto us, the gift of life, the gift of health, the gift of strength, the gift of turning to you in our times of high stress and our times of uncertainty. But God, we know that you are with us. Thank you for all the rich blessings in which you have bestowed upon us. And we ask, O oh God, that thou would continue to walk with us and guide us and to keep us in perfect peace, whose minds are stayed on thee. We thank you for who you are and for how you are in this time in our lives. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. I want for us this morning to look at a very familiar Psalms. Psalms that we can find great comfort in. It's Psalms 23. I chose this particular Psalms to preach from this morning because of what comfort it brings to me personally. This is one of my favorite texts to turn to and to be a part of and to make um, sense of life when it, is, it gets a little bit uneasy and the road gets a little rocky and the waters become a little choppy. But the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters he restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Psalmist is found here and penned for us. Something that we need to read over and over again as these weeks and months unfold. As I was sitting and watching CNN this week, I kept watching the numbers on the screen saying how many people were infected and how many deaths had occurred as a result of the people that had contracted the virus. And the numbers just kept escalating higher and higher and higher. I found within myself the stress as I sat and I watched this, the stress level inside of me began to creep up. And so I turned the television off in an attempt to ease my anxiety because I realized that for every death and for every person that's infected with this coronavirus, I realized that someone's life has been altered forever because a loved one's life could be taken. The sickness could end in job displacement because the person is not able to recover to full capacity and return to providing for their family or for themselves. And so I know that this whole time uh, of, of this pandemic is creating within all of us unrest. So I said, how do we as a people of faith deal with this unrest? And that's when I turned to my favorite psalm and I began to read through it very slowly, verse by verse, 
almost word by word, inching my way through in order to find some meaning in all of this. And then I went back and I started to read maybe for a fourth time. And it was in that fourth time that it really began to open up and, and speak to me in regards to this particular situation in which we find ourselves. And that opening verse says something very powerful and profound to us that I think we need to grasp and hold on to. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Want. I shall not want. The psalmist somehow or another has found in God security, assurance that all of his needs would be met. As I sat there at my dining room table and I meditated on that, security. That's what we all are looking for right now. We all want to feel secure. We all want to know that everything is going to be all right and that everything is going to work out. A sense of security, a sense of it's going to be all right. I'm going to make it through this. We're going to make it through this. Security. Wow. How did the psalmist, how did he get that sense of security in God? He knew that God was in charge, that God was in control, that God had set everything in motion, and that as a shepherd, the shepherd was acquainted with all of his sheep. He knew their every need. He knew their personality, their temperament. He knew what made them tick. And as I sat there and I reflected upon it, I said, boy, God is acquainted with me. God knows how I'm feeling right now. God knows I'm, I'm experiencing uneasiness. God realizes that right now there's a, a sense of anxiety running through me because it's kind of like if I go anywhere, I'm, 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 exposing myself to the potential of catching the virus. So do I stay locked up in this, this house and these four walls? Do I, I stay in this safe place and, and call this my hiding place? No, God must become my hiding place. God must be the place in which I rest all of my security. It's not in washing my hands, which I do practice social distancing, which I do, making sure that I clean all the services, which I do. That gives me a small sense of security. But it's when I know that the God who created me, the God who formed the world, the God who set everything in motion, once I realize that God has not stepped back from us, but God has drawn near to us because he knows what we're feeling. He understands our anxiety. He's acquainted with us. He is acquainted with us intimately in such a way that I can go to him and I can, can kind of rest my head on his breast and feel their sense of oneness with him. I remember early on when we had our first child, Septima, one of the things that she would do when she got anxious or things were troubling her, she would just walk up to me. And if I was sitting on the couch, she would just crawl up into my lap, never saying a word. She would just crawl up into my lap and, and lay her head on my chest and I would put my arms around her and I say, what's wrong, buddy? She says, nothing. But I knew her behavior, her, her presence, her, her silence said that something was troubling her. But she didn't want to share at that moment. So I would simply embrace her to make her feel secure. And before long, she would just simply get up and 
leave and go back to playing and interacting with life. She just needed that comfort. She just needed that reassurance that everything was okay. And she found that. She found that simply by walking up to me and crawling up into my lap. Church, we are challenged right now to crawl up in God's lap and feel secure and not fret, not be afraid, not be anxious, but be comforted. The psalmist says, I'm not going to worry about anything because I know that God is, God is going to meet my needs. God is going to, to be there. He's not far off, but he's watching me. He's watching my every move. The, the shepherd would, would stand in the midst of the flock or keep a watchful eye over the flock and his presence brought about calm. His presence brought about assurance. His presence brought about comfort. And I wonder today that as Christians, do we even sense God's presence in all of this that's going on around us? Or, or are we focusing upon the events themselves as I was the other day as I engaged myself in CNN? I was putting my, 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 my focus upon what was happening, what was unfolding. And out of that, it began to create the anxiety. But then when I went to the, the 23rd Psalms and began to meditate on it, and my focus turned to not CNN, but to the word of God, there was a peace that began to descend upon me, a reassurance. I realized I was in good hands. I was in good hands. I was, I was in God's care. One of our childhood songs that I learned growing up is he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got me and you, brother, me and you, sister, in his hand. All states makes the claim you're in good hands with all state. But if all state wants to challenge something that happens to you or a loved one in an accident, you may not feel that you are in good hands, especially if it doesn't go in your favor. And so even though Allstate makes that claim and they make that constant claim in their advertisement, I don't feel secure in the hands of Allstate because I know I have to play by their rules. But what I understand to be true about God and what I think the, un the psalmist understood about God was that God could be trusted, that God would be consistent, that God does not flip back and forth, but that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that we could feel that we are in good hands with him. I do. The psalmist goes on to say that, you know, after my, my needs are met and after I follow after the good shepherd that in my journeying with him, in my movement with God, I want you to watch something, church. In our movement with God, there's a point where the psalmist says he make us lie down. Life is exhausting. I wish I had people in front of me so I could hear an amen there, but all of you would agree, I hope, to understand that life takes something out of us. Each day that we live, it pulls something out of us, and we are constantly in need of renewal. And God knows that. And so as God is our shepherd, he says to us, come, rest. Come experience renewal. Come and be regenerated. Come into my presence and put your head on my chest 
and rest. And it is in that resting that we find a sense of peace. A real sense of peace. As those times that Septima would come and crawl up into my lap and never talk about what was bothering her. But I knew something was bothering her. And I didn't try to investigate because I believed that if she wanted me to know what was going on, she would have verbalized it. But it was something that she found in crawling up into my lap and laying her head upon my chest that brought renewal to her. And she would stay there until she felt regenerated. I declare, church, I believe that God is inviting all of us during this time of anxiety to crawl up into him and on him and rest and feel renewal, to feel regenerated, to feel encouraged, to feel it's going to be all right. I know that it's going to be all right. So God says that after you get rest, move out again. I believe, church, that if we periodically throughout our day find moments of rest and take heart in knowing that God is our our shepherd, that we can make it through this intact. Now, notice something, if you still have your Bibles open, notice something. The psalmist does not say that life is full of roses. It's full of ease. He does not give us that illusion that it's just smooth sailing all the time. He invites us to understand that there are going to be some troubling times. There are going to be some things that, that challenge us. And he says, yea, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. He makes it very clear that sometime life can become unsettling. He makes it very clear to us that we will be tried and that even death itself may appear before us. But he says, I find comfort in thy rod and thy staff. I find comfort in knowing that what I see, you see. David says, the shepherd knew what threat there was. And he saw the threat maybe before the animals saw the threat. Church, God is aware of this this virus and its potential and what it is doing and what it has done. And I believe, church, with all of my heart, with all of my soul and all of my being, that God was with those who have gone on and with those who are struggling on ventilators and those who are sitting isolated from family and loved ones. That God says, I'm here my rod and my staff, they will bring you comfort. The comfort is in knowing you are not by yourself. That this this thing that you're experiencing, I'm in it with you. I'm here with you. I'm feeling your tears. I'm feeling every breath that you struggle to breathe. I'm with you. And I'm holding you in this. As my daughter Septima would get up and go back to her play, to her activity, I would sometimes wonder, I would sometimes wonder what it was that was bothering her. But if she didn't share it with me, it did not matter because now I saw my little girl back to herself, back to her activity back to being and doing church we're in good hands with God and because we're in good hands with God 
we can go about our daily tasks. We can go about our daily business. Knowing that the shepherd, which is the Lord, is with us. He is leading us. So after we have experienced rest and renewal, we must get up. We must take that renewed energy and move again. And so I'm hoping that each day that we would face that day knowing that because God has given us rest in the night and even sometime rest in the midst of the day, that that renewed energy we have is not just for us, but it's to be used to move out and continue to impact others. The psalmist says that thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anointest my head with all my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Goodness and mercy. Goodness and mercy will follow us. It will keep coming to us. Blessings will keep coming. And even when we don't appreciate the blessing and even when we stray away from God, mercy finds us and brings us back to him. I want to encourage each one of you to spend some time with this 23rd Psalms this week. Spend some time with it, read it, reread it, read it out loud, pray it, whatever, but spend some time with it and see if it does not change you to understanding that the Good Shepherd is watching over you, watching over me, and that he's guiding us in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And if God is leading us as I conclude this sermon. We must understand something. If someone is leading us, it means we're not in charge of the destination. The leader is. God has purpose, God has intent for where he's taking us. And even if he takes us through the valley of the shadow of death, we must trust him. Our steps are not for us to decide how we will take them. Our steps are steps of obedience, of following. Where he leads, I will follow. Is a line from one of the hymns. So I'm asking today, church, that as you understand you're in good hands with God, that where he leads, we as his children, will be willing to trust his leadership as he is our shepherd, as he was for the psalmist. So let him be for us also. And in letting him be who he is, letting God be God, and we be his sheep of his pasture, that we not fall into the temptation to stray away into our own understanding and blaze our own little trail because it only makes the master come looking for us to bring us back into the fold. So allow God to be that good shepherd that gives us a sense of security, who promises us rest, who promised to prepare a table in the presence of that which frightens us. Who promises to allow goodness and mercy to always pursue us. Imagine that goodness and mercy has picked up your scent. I grew up out in the country where the old hound dog, if he ever got your scent, he wasn't going to stop until he found you. That's the imagery of 
what it is with God, goodness and mercy. Those hound dogs of goodness and mercy following after us, pursuing us for our own sake. Rest assured today, church, that our shepherd is aware and that he's leading, he's guiding, he's providing. God is with us. Let us pray. God, we thank you again for our time together on this Lord's Day. Pews may be empty here at Mount Pleasant Missionary Baptist Church, but your house is full. Your worshipers are worshiping you. And we thank you for the worshiping community. We thank you for the prayers that have been prayed. We thank you for the prayers that are being answered. We thank you for those who day in and day out worship you in spirit and in truth. May our time together, God, continue to be blessed as we're absent one from another. But bind thy hearts in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. We thank you, God, for what you're doing, for what you have done, and what you're going to do. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let me thank all of you for joining in with us this morning again and being a part of this worship experience. We thank you for what you're doing and praying for each other. Let me encourage you all to continue to send your tithes and your offerings to our P.O. Box 741 or here at the church at 212 South Street, Belmont, North Carolina, 28012. We thank you for being a part of the believing community. And together, praying one for another, we will continue to be the kingdom of God and the people of the God and the sheep of his pasture. And to know that he will allow us to graze in green pastures and lie down beside still peaceful waters. Be encouraged until we meet again on next Sunday, same place. Be blessed. God bless you.